If you follow my community tab, my vlog channel, uh, my social, you may have seen the announcement that I made that you can now buy my pattern art on your choice of fabric on Spoonflower. If you don't know what this site is, you can basically buy artists art on any kind of fabric and you can check out my shop I'll link it right here. It's also linked down below. Really excited about this because I love making print patterns and I've always wanted to make my own fabric with them. So now that I can, of course, I want to turn it into book projects. This fabric that I have on hand is actually a proof of all my designs. If you're new to Spoonflower, you have to proof every design you upload to sell. So you have to buy it to make sure it all looks right. That can get pricey, but a convenient and affordable way they have is to use the fill a yard feature. And you can actually do this with your own collection or any fabric collection from any artists on the website. Obviously you don't have to order your fabric this way. You can order one design if you'd like, but however you choose, if you do buy any of my patterns on fabric, I would love to see whatever you make from them. Clothes, book covers, uh, bags, whatever, tag me. I'd love to see it. So I wasn't planning on making a book from this yard of swatches, but I am too impatient and too excited to turn this into something. So I'm going to see what I can make from a 12 by 12 swatch of the passion fruit pattern. I wanna to try to get a front and back cover out of this. So maybe a book around this size would work, but also I'd like to get some of the fabric on the inside of the covers as well. So maybe this will be enough I trimmed out the square and now I want to turn it into book cloth. I'm going to use the same method I've been doing for years, which is using heat and bond. And I go through this entire process in a past video. This will take you through all the steps if you want to learn how to make book cloth. And I still do the same process years later. I'm cutting out a piece of the heat and bond that is just slightly smaller than the swatch of square I'm going to iron it on. But first making sure that the fabric has as little wrinkles as possible. In hindsight, I should have ironed this even more because those creases ended up showing through. Putting the textured side of the heat and bond down, leaving a little bit of a border, and ironing it down. This heat and bond will act as a barrier so glue doesn't seep through to the fabric, while also being an adhesive so it sticks to tissue paper or paper, which will then stick to the board for the cover. As you can see, there's a little crease left on the fabric, which is why I should have taken a bit more time to iron it flat, but I think I'm going to cut or fold in that area anyway, so it should be okay. At this point, I wasn't sure what kind of book binding to do, and I couldn't make up my mind, so I hopped on to my Patreon and asked my patrons. It was between a double Coptic stitch with separate covers or a single section binding with a wrapped cover. Separate covers won the vote, so that's what I'm going to do. And if you want to help support my channel while getting secret behind the scenes clips every week, go check out my Patreon. I will link it down below. For the pages, I'm using 16 sheets of 9 by 12 drawing paper, cutting them in half to make that smaller size, and then folding those in half in groups of four to make signatures. That gives me eight signatures total, and I'm taking one of those signatures to use as a template to trace on the board, so that will be my cover size. Cutting two of those out to make the front and back cover. Now to plan where to glue these boards so I can make the most of my fabric material. I trimmed off any uneven edges on the fabric so I have exactly the size of fabric I'm going to wrap the covers in. Using this 15 millimeter spacer to plan out exactly where I'm going to fold over the fabric so I know what to expect because I really don't have any fabric to spare here. And there was just enough to lift over to glue onto the inside of the covers, but if there wasn't, I was just going to use cardstock paper. Now let's see if I can glue this book cloth to the boards using PVA.
Now that I've wrapped both front and back covers, I want to press them so the board will dry flat. I'm sandwiching them in between paper so it can absorb any moisture from the glue and putting them in my book press to dry. I left these in here for about a day just to make sure that they were completely dry and I really do like the results of the book cloth. The cotton really seemed to take well to the shape of the board and I didn't find any air pockets. Now moving on to piercing all the binding holes. Using my binding guide for the signatures, I made two holes on each end spaced out like this. I use an erasable marker to measure out where I'm going to pierce the holes so it's easier for me to see, and then I wipe it off when I'm done. I pierced through each signature and then used one of them as a template for the covers. Marking them about 3 fourths of an inch from the edge and then using my awl to pierce through. Doing that to both front and back cover and now I can finally move on to the binding. For this I'm doing a double Coptic stitch method using two colors of wax thread and four needles. Tying the ends of a blue and pink thread in a knot and since this is a double Coptic stitch method, I'm putting a needle on each end of the thread. And I'm going to put a bookbinder's knot so that the needles won't fall off while they're hanging from the book while I'm binding. I did that to the other set of needles, so I will be binding two sections with a double needle Coptic stitch. I won't be showing the whole process in this video because I have a whole other tutorial which goes into detail step by step on how to do it with one color and two colors and you can find that tutorial linked down below. If you can handle a traditional Coptic stitch, which I also have a tutorial for, you can handle this method. The advantage is that it gives you a braided look to your stitches and makes it easy to alternate between two colors of thread. So this is my very first project using my own fabric design, and I'm happy with the results. Now that I've seen how this fabric holds up as book cloth, I definitely want to make more and try printing my other designs in larger pieces of it, maybe try some different fabrics. They do have some canvas on the site, which I want to try later in a project. The 12 by 12 inch swatch was just enough to make two covers but I don't recommend uh, cutting it that close. If you want to make a book cover, get something that is more fabric just to be safe so you have enough. A big thank you to my patrons and members for supporting this channel and helping me make more videos like this. And if you want to subscribe, if you haven't already, please be sure to do that. Hit the bell, all that stuff, like the video. You can check out all the links in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.